connection between forms on a driver stack and three loop derived loop stack. Derived loop stack LX of X is the fiber product fiber product X times with itself via the diagonal maps like this. This is what the loop is like. It's not so complicated. You have x diagonally embedded inside x times x. And you have x, again, diagonally embedded inside x times x. And you look at the fiber product. This fiber product is the loop is like It's going to be yes. I mean, it has derived an angel. So far, five Okay, but yes, it's going to be derived by the So, um, so why? Uh, okay. On the other hand, on the other hand, on the other hand. Before that, we have seen that the derived loop stack is the derived the space of derived maps from circle to X. That's or the maps from the, the ma loop space of X. It's a loop space of X. Okay, so what is the connection between the two? Well, you know, the connection is the following. Can. The connection is the connection is to realize S one the circle as a simplicial object. Algebraic. So what is S one? It's a diagram like this with two arrows. And so this is our S1. This is the model for our S1. So when I look at map from circle to X, it corresponds to mapping each one of these vertices to X. So let's call these maps, by the way, 1 and 2. So a map from circle to X is, this, is the data. So is an element alpha from a space of maps from circle to x is given by choosing two points x in x and y in x, right? Okay, as soon as I do that, I will get the x times x. And then there are the relations, these relations. So arrow one implies that you would like to have a relation between x and y in x times x. So you would like to have x little x to be equal to y. Right? So this is the same as, as soon as you realize this, this is the same as cutting the diagonal inside 
And relation to also implies x equal to y, in fact. And this is also the same as picking the diagonal inside x, x times x. So if you have ambient x to be a torus, and you would like to map a circle in here, what do you want to say? A circle is a loop. You pick two points, x and y, inside this ambient torus, and you would like to say, I would like to be able to construct a loop. So you would like to say that I, I find a map from x and y, but then I would like to close this map. So I would like x equal to y. That's a loop. And so you would like to set x equal to y, which, may, which means that inside here, you're looking at the diagonal. X and Y, and then inside here you close it. And well, you do it twice because you have the relation twice. But algebra the algebraic geometry actually distinguishes between imposing the relation, the relation for the second time. Imposing the relation for the second time is a big deal in algebraic geometry because, in some sense, this says that take the diagonal and intersect it with itself inside X times X. Fine, it seems like you just set the recipe to get the diagonal itself, but of course algebra geometrically not. Because this intersection is not transverse. So the diagonal. can see what is the algebra of functions defined on such intersection of diagonal inside here. So if you look at holomorphic functions supported on self-intersection of diagonal, those are actually given by all of the diagonal tensor width over all x plus x modules tensor width all of the diagonal again. Well, but then of course, diagonal is higher co-dimension in x times x. So this tensor product has higher torus. And so we realize that the skin theoretically, this guy is realized as the spectrum of this ring. But what is this ring? This is the Hochschild ring. This is exactly the thing that gives you the Hochschild cohomology of x. So the Hochschild cohomology of x Hochschild ring of x is given by cohomology Okay, now this is interesting because then you would you can do certain things. And uh, in fact, there's also this rather different interpretation of the Hopson homology of X that's given by this harm functor from O of delta to of O of delta i. Right. So if you look at the Hochschild cohomology here, what is O of delta? 
all of delta, okay, so delta map is embedding x inside, x times x, right? So all of delta is nothing but push forward under the diagonal map of x. So okay, so the Hochschild cohomology of x is given as x times, basically, this is in the derived category, this is uh, r hump basically, or homomorphism. This is the group, because if you take, if you take higher x on x, it's the same as taking homomorphisms on the derived category of x. So writing x i of f and g over the, just the category of sheets on x, is the same as homomorphisms on the derived category as a group. It's the same as this from F shifted by, comma G shifted by. Okay, so this thing. So this is the, this thing, right? And so immediately you realize that by the left adjointness of the left derived pullback and right derived push forward, you can write this as a homomorphism on the derived category of x itself of the left derived pullback of the derived push forward of ox and then ox shifted by r. I just can put this thing Now you can ask yourself, I have x embedded inside here. I think it's a structure sheet. Push it forward, pull it back, what do I get? If you do that, if you take the structure sheet, push it forward and pull it back, like that, of course you will get the structure sheet back, but you will, again, algebraic geometry, you will get more. You will, you will see the information of the conormal sheet of x inside this x comes up. So you will see in the derived category, you will see omega x i shifted by i by the index of x. You will see something like that. And well, this all x you can think of, I mean these are, by these we mean lamp, you know, exterior product of the sheaf of Kähler differentials on x shifted by i for i bigger than zero. And you can define this one as the zeroth exterior product of omega x shifted by zero. And this is exact triangle actually splits in some way. So you can actually write simply, you can just say that this is nothing but this. For all I. Okay, so if you do that, then this homomorphism becomes homomorphism in the bounded draft category of x from omega x, let's say j, omega j x j, o x i. So you can immediately see that the Durham complex of x will be realized by Hochschild cohomology of x. Okay, so the left hand side is Hochschild cohomology, and the right hand side are cohomology. That's right. No, the left hand side is Hochschild. Uh, yeah, it might be. I might, I might not. So the whole has a relation. Yeah, oh, they are dual of each other by the adjunction. So one of them is the. You use this one and the other one. You use this. I will write it down. How about that? So basically, the way I did that calculation over there, and the other one is just a dual of this one. I mean, so you just see that for Hochschild i, Hochschild cohomology of x, you will get basically all. One of these guys. So you will get a so option cohomology of x seems like it's real, realizing the 
sum over j of the mm, tangent j of x shifted by i. So if I did this for all of the i's, so this thing would, would be just a tangent complex of x, cohomology of the tangent complex, or the resolution of the tangent complex. And then Hopkins homology will be the Durham. So in particular, in particular, going back to what, how what I defined, this loop stack of X was the fiber product of X by a diagonal maps with itself, and because of the fiber product naturally has a map to X, and in fact, this map is called P, we can show that push forward on the structure sheet of the loop stack of X is going to be summing over all P, lambda P, omega, X shifted by P in bounded drag factor. And this is, this is, with this shift, is the Durham complex of X, which I defined before. And what is this isomorphism? This is the famous Hopf shield constant. Rosenberg isomorphism, famous as H HKR. So differential forms on X are realized as functions on the loop stack of X. Really beautiful thing, and very concrete at the same time. So, so now uh, I can say some things about it. So, so hence the four P forms on X are again realized as a uh, functions on loop stack of x, and uh, this is the free loop space functions on functions on free loop space of weight p. A p form on it is a function of weight p on the loop Moreover, uh, the closed P forms, closed P forms, can be realized as S one invariant, S one invariant functions. on loop stack of x under the action of S1 on Lx given by rotations of S1. This one is, uh, is worked out in the, in the work of Toen and Renzozi did this, Toen, also Benz B and 
Nadra also shows it. Okay, so so far I have a scheme. Nothing is derived yet. Nevertheless, I have a derived step that defined for the scheme and that it realizes, it functions on this drive is like realize the pressure force on this drive. Not only that, there is an action of a rotation by circle on this, and closed forms on my original scheme are realized by invariant functions on the direction of the rotation. It's very, very, very and it's extremely useful. I say something about it as a remark, but we are not going to go into the depth of detail of it. So maybe some comments, because one of us is a physicist, string theorist. Right? I can say that. <laughs> so string theorists are familiar with this. So um, so let me say what I want to say. So a comment. So um, we can uh, consider consider a complex homology homology of the circle of S one given as a, a Z two graded algebra. Well, you know, homology of the circle is given by Z, complex value of it is given by C, but I can soup it up and think about that homology ring as a supercommutative ring. This is something the string theorists might do, do all the time. So I can realize this thing as a somewhat souped up supercommutative ring of dual numbers where this thing is the odd thing, odd variable, where degree of this e is equal to 1. And it's the square 0 and odd variables in the super, super quantum field theory and things like that do satisfy this, the square to 0. So now, homology, complex value of homology circles realizes as a z2 graded ring. OK, so. Under this, then this this makes uh, this guy into a into a Z two graded Z two graded supercommutative ring supercommutative ring of functions on well, a fine line, but now I have changed the parity. I've changed the, uh, it, it's an affine line because it's still it's a C, but I have changed, I've, I've, I've made it like an odd affine line. So, super commutative ring of functions on odd affine line, C. So good. Now under this, now, now we can realize, can realize. So remember that zero homology is just functions on S1, right? And then forms on S1 and so on and so forth. So now we can realize the mapping the space or the loop space. We can realize the loop space. of a manifold, manifold x as a as mapping the space from odd affine line to x. Now I have changed. This thing captures all the possible functions that you, you would like to use. I mean 
know, on the circle. Right? So on the mapping of the circle, on the particular mapping of functions, but the critical points. I would like to understand all of them. Topological realization of the circle is now with the affine line. Functions define on the algebra of the odd affine line. Okay, so why am I allowed to do this? Because remember that when we discussed the loop stack of an X, we didn't just get just maps from circle to X. We realized that this is given by the self-intersection of diagonal of x, and those are functions which understand all the differential forms and so on. So this is why I'm looking at this cohomology here. Okay. So, okay, so then the map is the space as this, which is, which is, which then, which turns out to be mm, the odd, odd tangent bundle. Tangent super manifold of X shifted by X. With functions um, over Z2 graded, Z2 graded algebra of differential forms, differential forms, symmetric algebra, well, you know, this is not something new, we just did it, we just did it, basically, remember that I said that when I push forward the functions on the loop stack of x, I will get the Durham complex of x. And that was the this thing shifted by p. Okay, but this is nothing but the symmetric algebra of omega x1. This is the same thing. The shift gives you the p-shifts, all of them. Okay, but these are the functions on the derived stack of x, loop stack of x. So the loop stack itself is given by the spectrum of this thing. And so the loop stack itself is this thing. So this is, we already have seen it. Just the opposite is the continuity. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, shifted tangent bundle of x. Yeah, just the dual of this. It's the thing whose structure shift is given by this symmetric object. It's the spectrum of this. I just call it the shifted tangent bundle. Ah, okay, so, mm. so what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that. I'm trying to say that. Um, therefore, you see that T x shifted by minus one. T x shifted by minus one is a linear analog. Linear analog of free loop space. So I look at the loop space, I look at the Z2 graded, I look at the cohomology of the circle, I soup it up into a super primitive algebra, and then I realize maps that gives me the realization of maps from the circle as maps from the half odd, odd affine line to X. And that is odd tangent super manifold. This fact can be proved in coordinates, in fact. If you have, if you have this thing to here, what you can do is you can basically take a locus around the point. So basically, you can prove this statement by taking 
a map from C times B for some parameter of scheme B to here. And then actually work out that this realization, this map gives you this, this map. You can write it in coordinates. And then you can shrink B and send it to a point. And then you will get what you want. Well, I don't want to do this. This actually is the way. You can actually has a even in coordinates. Okay, so you will get this thing. This is the linear analog of the free loop space. Okay, what is the point? Similarly, the linear analog, the linear analog of S1 action on uh, S1 action of loop rotations. is given by, along this one loop rotation, is given by, is given by translation, translation along the odd affine line. Isn't that beautiful? So, so the Durham differential, differential, Durham differential can be regarded as regarded as an square zero, square zero. Um, Vector field on this odd tangent bundle. Everything is, by the way, odd. Which is the which is the infinitesimal. Decimal mm, generator of this translation action. Decimal generator of this translation. It is, you can have the supercommutative manifold, mm -hmm. right? If you, you want to say the notation is the best, so you want to say there's no, no, no even. It's the same as affine line. It's the same as affine line. Well, you know, in general, if you have a super manifold like that, locally the function ring of this guy looks like uh, this is even, this is odd, bosonic fermionic. Mm -hmm. So this is, this part is this, okay? But then this part, Instead of coefficients in C, we replace this with coefficients in lambda exterior algebra of y1 to yn, where yeah, exterior algebra of y1 to yn, that's it. And now here, this is the, just the one dimensional version. Each one of these y's sits in degree one. It's an odd variable, and it squares to a zero. So re remind yourself of superaction integral in the honest superstring theory, super in M theory. When you do fermionic action integral, you 
can see those fields with certain with, with correlations are realized by relations in the superconducting algebra and this class of graph. These are your gravity waves. That's right. Topologically it's a point. Topologically it's a point. With a vector with an odd vector space on it. Precisely. So it's a point with a field on it. And the field is an odd field. That's correct. So topologically supermanifold is the same as the bosonic part of the supermanifold. But then these are extra fields. Correct. Okay. Mm. So that. So uh, So this is this, hence linear uh, analog of S1 uh, in equivariant or invariant functions on free loop space, free loop stack is cyclic I will talk about this later, of functions on x in the form of its Durham complex. This is really interesting because it gives us some kind of intuition that, you see, I, real, I look at the loop stack, given by maps from circle, then I look at the cohomology of the circle, and I realize that it can be realized as a superconductive ring. Then I realize that uh, the loop stack of X is realized this way by identifying the circle with the I, odd affine line. It's realized as, as maps from odd affine line to X. Okay? And that is the odd tangent bundle of X. So, if I have an action by rotations on the circle, that action translates into translation inside this odd tangent bundle. And if I look at this action infinitesimally, the generator of infinitesimal translation in here is the Durham differential. So now I can say, what is an S1 invariant function on the loop stack? We, we, were, we, we wanted them to be closed uh, differential forms, right? A closed differential form. We said R S1 equivariant or S1 invariant function. S1 invariant function on the loop stack is realized as infinitesimally invariant function with respect to the action on this one. But that infinitesimal action is the differential. So it is the closed form. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's not like the off tangent bundle. I mean, like, you, you just uh, change the parity of the tangent bundle. That's right. That's right. I just changed the parity of the tangent bundle. So I have the tangent bundle, I look at the fibers, and then I say, now I want to think of these as odd fields. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, that's right. A lot of these things come from differential Yes, correct. Okay, I find these things really beautiful. I don't know about you, but to me, amazing. So that is that. So I said about HKR. No further comments. No further comments. The mark. The mark. Uh, note that. Uh, When this was for one scheme, right? When x is equal to a uh, spec of R, spec of R, one can construct uh, in, in spec of R. We 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 showed we showed that. 
showed that loop stack of x which was mapped from here to here is equivalent is equivalent to spectrum of the Hochschild complex of the complex of X. So Hochschild, Hochschild uh, complex ring, you know, as a graded ring, Hochschild ring of X. And that thing was, uh, it, it is just like an affine scheme over a commutative ring. This thing is nothing but r dot over r dot cancel r dot times r dot. Hochschild, Hochschild ring of x. Hochschild ring of x. We already have done calculation of what this is. I completely showed you. But you can also write it as a description like this where R dot is simply, you know, this Hochschild ring of X realizes all differential forms on it. So if, I, if you write it like this, this R dot is simply the Kojou resolution of R. It's the Kojou resolution. So, if you want to calculate a uh, loop stack of x, for a regular scheme, undrived, un just affine regular scheme, look at the coordinate ring of that scheme, write down the Kojul resolution, construct this thing, and then calculate. So take this perspective. Oh, I guess it's true, there is a few things, even if there is two values in the graph. Don't matter. Don't matter. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. So for instance, um, of course, okay. So all I mean is, um, oh, okay, that's what you want. So for instance, example, let x be the closure, or the zero locus, a bunch of polynomials in affine line, in affine space, like that. Okay, so the ring on which x is defined is given by complex ring in n variables. Okay, and x is realized as r divided by ideal of m functions. Now, of course, I can construct the Kojul complex or Kojul resolution of this ring. This is what we were talking about, commented on. So, how do you do it? You can construct a complex for each one of these polynomials. Let's define a complex Fi. I can define it as the following complex. So, you see, I can take R, I can, by a multiplication by that polynomial, I can map to R. And this is my two-term complex. I, I think of it as a two-term complex sitting in degree 0 and 1. And then, in fact, I can take the co-kernel, and that co-kernel is the R modulo ideal generated by Fi. And it goes to 0, and this goes to 0, and this goes to 0. So you can, in fact, realize that this thing R uh, modulo by ideal of Fi is quasi isomorphic to this R dot defined by Fi. Okay, two term complex, right? So then what you can do is uh, you can take the tensor product of all of those things. Now define, define Kojul complex complex of x, which I can call r dot of 
data f1 to fn as tensor product r dot of f1 derived tensor product over the ring r of r dot of f2 all the way derived tensor product to r dot of fn two term complex two term complex two term complex all of them are two term complex So then we can show that we I don't want to make mistakes in the degrees and so on. So yeah, so see that you can observe observe that the degree P part of r dot f1 to fn is given by is given by lambda p plus 1 stereo power of r to the n hence given a set of basis vectors P uh, versus I0 to EIP EI0 I can write it like this set of basis vectors for lambda P plus 1 uh, stereo product of R to the M, we can define the differential on R dot of F1 all the way to Fm given by of EI0 EIP as the thing from 0 to P minus 1 to the P plus 1 and some, some coefficient EI0 So now, furthermore, if you look at if you look at this thing, remember that these are two term complexes, each sitting in degree zero and one. But not, nevertheless, each one of these things in the derived category of your affine variety is quasi isomorphic to this thing, for instance, is quasi isomorphic to R divided by the ideal of M. Fm. So this way you can immediately see that your R dot of F1 to Fm becomes quasi-isomorphic to R divided by this. Well, of course, that's what the resolutions do. A resolution is quasi-isomorphic to that thing. Yeah, you should have regular sequence. Yes, should be a regular sequence of components. That's right. Yes. Thank you. Then you can see that the resolution of R divided by this ideal can be written as, well, you know, the thing you know, so 0 to lambda 
lambda m of r to the m goes to lambda 2 of r to the m goes to that r to the m and then goes to r and then goes to r divided by the ideal of f of r to fm and then goes to 0 and he's right this these need to be a regular sequence in the polynomial ring of the group. Okay, so that's it. And you see, well, this thing is the quasi isomorphic causal resolution whose pth terms are given by the pth of the other That's it. P plus one. Very good. So, in order to calculate the derived loop stack of a given scheme, if it is uh, some embedded in something, then you can construct it as a resolution and you can do it. This is what you want. Okay, very good. So, this. And then. Uh, what else? Now, what time is it? Okay, so now I think we are ready. So we realize that using this amazing HKR, we can look at forms as functions on the loop stack. And we can look at closed forms. I didn't put the argument for you because I did some lots of construction by this uh, Benz V and NAND. I find, I find the construction and Similar constructions, really. I mean, Cohen Bensozi and Benz Nadler did this realizing P closed forms as S1 equivariant functions on the loop stack. And uh, I like the Benz V Nadler. Plus, the Cohen Bensozi paper is French. So. <laughs> Maybe it can read it a bit slower. But anyway, so this is the idea, and now, now we are moving to, this was over regular scheme, on drive the schemes. Now let's move to drive the schemes. So we are changing the base ring. So, basically, uh, synthetic structures on derived affine schemes. I'm not sure how much of this I can cover today, but we will go as we can. So let a dot be a CDGA commute with the ratio of graded ring uh, over complex numbers. And then uh, we, we, we then we define the Hom algebra for complex the home complex of A as the home complex of A was just simply symmetric algebra over, over A dot modules of the omega dot 1 over A dot modules shifted by 1. Now I'm putting everywhere a dot. These are not zero, it's a dot. Um, because now this is a uh, commutative, differentially graded ring. Okay, so this is the P of omega dot P shifted by P again. And this is also the Durham complex of the drive affine scheme given as a spectrum of it. Is the same thing as the Durham of X, where X tilde is the spectrum of A dot. And so now, uh, so this, what is the uh, property of this Durham? 
complex. So, in fact, remember that looking at this A dot, we, we realized a differentially graded algebra doesn't need to be necessarily finally generated algebra. It could, it could be constructed from some commutative ring A0 and then a bunch of three vector bundles or three modules over that ring, like Q minus one, this we did before, Q minus one, it keeps going. So this could keep going. In fact, uh, how could I say it? I want to say um, it's, uh, I would like to define, so let's write it this way. TR of A dot is, uh, is realized as a graded mixed complex. Um, algebra of a dot is simply p from 0 to infinity of lambda p these things shifted by p and which is the same as p from 0 to infinity of minus infinity to 0 of lambda p omega 1 to the k shifted by p. k. k. Why is this? Because remember, I have a 0, a dot, this a dot, okay, so this a dot looks like a 0, a minus 1, a minus 2, and it keeps going. Now, for each one of these pieces, I have the sheaf of differentials, so omega of A0 and omega of A1. These are modules over their corresponding rings, and it keeps going. Okay, and so, and then I can apply this functor to this thing, this uh, operator to this thing, so in each level, for a commutative differentially graded ring, at each level I can have a pth4. So you can immediately see that I have two differentials. One of them, the internal differential of the commutative ring, which determines this k, tells you which omega, which piece in the ring I'm taking this differential, and the other one is the Durham ring. So it's a bigraded complex, and this is what we mean by mixed complex. So this a little bit complicates the situation because now you have also this internal differential of A. So in principle, for instance, if you ask yourself, what's a 2-4 on A dot? Well, it's a sequence of two fours. Right? Possibly even infinite sequence. Okay, so it has the mixed complex has two gradings. It has two gradings, degree, and degree and weight, where components components, lambda p, omega dot 1 over a dot modules, k shifted by p, this thing has degree, has degree k minus p, and weight p. So the weight is the Durham weight. The internal differential, so why is it like this? So the internal, the 
differential. D is the something that takes you from the Durham complex of A, A dot, to the Durham complex or algebra of A dot. And uh, uh, this is of degree one and weight zero. Because the weight is the is the order of the exterior algebra. So what does D do? D takes something of uh, lambda P of omega dot one over A dot, the kth piece in the internal ring, the kth piece shifted by P because this P and that P. This takes it to lambda P again, doesn't change the weight because weight zero of this module over A dot in the k plus one piece and then p. So that's what that thing is. So that is the and m and and the Durham Durham differential. Durham differential, what does that do? That is something from here, again, to here, which has a degree minus one. So that was degree one, weight zero. This has degree minus one, and this is complicated. This is not something I could have just guessed in my head. Look at it. So I'll wait one. So that DDR maps. So this is what DDR does. It takes lambda P uh, shifted by P to the p plus one on the dot one a uh, shifted by p plus one. Uh, wait a minute. So as I have written it, is weight one degree zero, right? Zero. I mean, uh, uh, um, Dennis, is is the Durham in the? One zero, yeah. Because it could be a mixed thing. No, actually, it is D plus D R, which is mixed. Uh, D, D plus D R is the mixed one. Yes. Good. So, okay. Now, the so these two differentials, two differentials. Uh, satisfy, satisfy D O D, which is D of D R O D of D R, or D O D R plus D D R O D, all of it is equal to zero. So later we will define D plus D R as our differential on the mixed complex and has that has degree one one. So that's our thing at this degree. And in fact uh, recently I saw one of these vibrated complexes where the differential has a degree minus because the Hodge Hodge complex was same actually. 
That will be different, yeah. That, this is why I probably in my notes I made a mistake with this. Yeah. Probably at some point I was thinking about this one. So that is that page back one. No. Did you find that the grid would be too wider? No. So let me see. Uh, so my form, uh, the first one, is starting the degree one. Let's take about k being uh, a degree two. Then, uh, then it should be minus one one. Oh, it's correct. Yeah, that is one. That is weight. He's asking about degree. Degree is the one. This is degree. This is weight. Uh, it, it defines the degree to be k minus two thousand. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Let me have a look. Give me a second. Oh no. This one has degree k minus p. This one has degree k minus p minus 1. Ah. <laughs> yes. Because, yes, because of the Thanks. Yes, so I was not mistaken. <laughs> So the multiplication, the multiplication on the half of uh, this uh, a dot maps maps this guy a of p. Q to like that. Okay, so that's it. Now, okay, very good. Now, We are going to, so this is all that we need to define our differential forms on derived schemes over a differentially graded ring. So for now, we are just working on affine schemes. So, so let us discuss about the space of p-forms. So definition, this is the PTBB. Definition, Pandepto and Mekid and Sozi, of the paper is presented structure. Define the simplicial set. Define the simplicial set. They call it like this A, P, X over C. No, oh, sorry. X, K of P forms. Of degree k and z on on the derived affine uh, scheme x spec of 
a dot okay, as this is the de definition of This is basically the simplicial, uh, you know, uh, simplicial set that you will get from this complex. This is their notation for the simplicial set. Thinking of the complex as a simplicial set. In general, in general, PTVV, in general, use this not this definition basically cotangent complex over a dot but we know that as we know but we, we saw that if X tilde is an affine scheme, affine gravity scheme over C, then omega 1 dot of A over A dot uh, serves as a model, as a model for a cotangent complex. This is a simplicial set. Yeah. So you think of this complex also as a graded vector space in a simplicial map. Did I say, uh, oh, well, yeah, you are right. Should be, this should be K minus E, right? Fixed it. Uh, with the question mark. Yeah, but it's yeah. Uh, okay. So now, what is the uh, okay? So what is the implication of this? The implication of this is that um, the mark. Note that uh, this definition definition implies implies that high zero of the A B C X K minus B of course I I I, I expect the degrees to be messed up but we will see is isomorphic to HK of lambda P omega 1 A dot gamma D or maybe not HK minus P of the lambda P omega dot 1 A dot Shifted by p with respect to its differential d. So the connected components, connected component, components of the simplicial set of p forms, p forms. Of degree k minus p on 
x are just are just k cohomology classes. K cohomology classes of complex. Lambda p on the one over a dot. When I was writing this down, I thought. Get the idea. Okay, so that is that. Yeah, that's definition in the situation. Situation above uh, with x tilde dispatch of a dot, the p form of degree k on this affine parameter scheme x for p bigger than or equal to zero and k less than or equal to zero is denoted um, by omega zero in lambda p of the pth of this is zero in case of situation. This is the internal. Okay, so two two uh, p forms uh, of degree k Let's call them omega zero and omega tilde zero are equivalent written omega zero equivalent to the one with tilde okay, they are equivalent if there exists Alpha zero. Now I will not uh, explain to you why I'm calling these things zero. Uh, why I'm putting the zero in here. It, 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 it has a good reason. So alpha zero in lambda p of omega of weight k minus one with Omega zero minus omega zero. Yeah, lots. So. Again, this D is the internal, internal. D. It, it, it realizes these equivalences realize the internal stuff of the CPGA. Then the equivalence classes. 
fullest classes of P forms of P forms of the zero of G to be K on X tilde correspond correspond to connected components Components of the simplicial set simplicial set of forms of the EK on X tilde in the sense of work with this cotangent complex, but for us, the point is that everything is, for now, realized like this. But later, when we do local calculations, I mean, we always cover the thing with the affine derived the scheme, so we are always looking at these things anyway, local, for local points. So, yeah. so let us stop in here. So now we have P forms on weight K. So what is the difference? We have regular schemes, we have P forms on it. Even on a regular schemes, P forms are defined on the loop stack on the upper level. Now we have derived schemes. Big difference is that now we realize even a P form itself could be an infinite sequence of forms. Now we would like to define these things as functions on the derived loop stack of the derived affines. And okay, there are many problems in here. Already you can see that here we have the p-forms of a given weight. So we have internal chromological weight given by the CPGA. And then things in the loop stack itself, I mean it X is the spectrum of some CPGA, Things over there are all are equivalent up to homotopy because the underlying ring is also homotopy up to in the CPGA. So now you, do, you need to define the notion of S1 a covariance or even action on this thing in a more sophisticated way. So we, we talk about these things next time when we go through the shifted symplectic structure. So what's the symplectic form over the derived affine scheme, it's an, in, it's an infinite sequence of p-forms. We would hope to define it as being closed and non-degenerate. And such that it induces a quasi-isomorphism into the tangent and cotangent complex of that derived affine scheme of the issue. So this is where we're going. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Ah, uh, so,